Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Today we'll be talking about genomics. The sequencing and analysis of the human genome allows us to know more about how we're built and therefore to predict and cure diseases. And we're getting better and better at it. So what if we all soon possessed our own smart DNA sequencers to analyze DNA? Stay with us. DNA contains all the hereditary information about a person, from their eye and hair color to their sex and vulnerability to diseases. Deciphering these building blocks is crucial to advanced scientific and medical research. And not only for humans, DNA sequencing of other species and organisms increases our knowledge of biodiversity and allows us to learn more about the origins of pathogens. That's right. The genomic sequencing of SARS-CoV-2, the virus causing COVID-19, has helped scientists map the biology and evolution of the virus and find effective vaccines in record time. And the European Commission wants member states to continue pulling efforts to increase sequencing of virus variants. Let's hear Commissioner for Health, Stella Kiriakidis. We are calling on member states to do more genomic sequences of these variants to share the information at EU level with partners. If we don't test and sequence, we are blind. But how much do we know about our own DNA? In one of the most ambitious scientific undertakings of all time, the Human Genome Project managed to decipher the complete human genome in 2003. At the time, it took this international team of scientists three years and three billion euros to do that. Let's listen to the project's director, Francis Collins. It was an international effort, and it had this audacious goal of reading out all of the letters of the human DNA code and produced all of this data in the public domain where, for all time, uh, people can be working on understanding how it works and applying it for medical benefit. But the technology is getting cheaper and faster. So today you can get your own DNA test kit online for less than 50 euros. Such tests promise insights into ancestry, disease risk, information on personality traits and even child talent. And it's a matter of time before personal DNA sequences are sold and used to detect pathogens or food contamination. So perhaps, in a not-so-distant future, we'll find sequences in public spaces such as hospitals or bathrooms, or in cars and kitchens to monitor foreign genomes in real time. Mm. Crazy idea? Perhaps not. But the interpretation of genetic data is complex and highly dependent on the context, which means it can easily lead to false interpretations if not done properly. So, what are the pros and cons of such technology? Stay with us. Well, the potential of genomics to offer more effective individual and collective healthcare solutions is beyond doubt. Let me give you an example. If a person's DNA analysis shows a genetic predisposition for type 2 diabetes, a few changes in lifestyle, such as more exercise and a healthier diet, could delay and eventually prevent the onset of the disease. And the more genetic knowledge we collect about individuals, the better we'll become at framing public health to the benefit of all citizens. But as genomics becomes more accessible and the wealth of data it accumulates increases, Ethical, legal, security and privacy issues will arise. For instance, who will own DNA data? Who will have access to it? And how to protect it from hacking or commercial abuse? In 2020, hackers cracked an online DNA database used by the police to do criminal searches. So there's definitely a need for safeguards to prevent misuse. The Declaration of Genomics Cooperation, signed by 13 European countries in 2018, aims at having at least 1 million sequenced genomes available in the EU by 2022. And it's grown into a real cooperation mechanism to share genomic information safely between 24 countries. While finding answers to all these legal, ethical and data security concerns in a future where personal DNA sequences are as common as smartphones. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.